This lesson describes the use of the line and shape tools and demonstrates a few common scenarios for using this set of tools. So in our toolbar here, we're gonna go down and choose the line tool. The line tool is a very simple tool that creates straight strokes for us to use. And we can see that in the properties panel here, we can choose the stroke color, the stroke height, so let's choose five, the style of the stroke, whether it's hairline, solid, dash, stippled, etc. Let's choose stippled. We can also edit the stroke style here. And if it's applicable, we can choose the scale type, cap, joint, and miter, and so forth. So stippled doesn't have that option, but going back to solid, it does. So how we want it to scale when it's resized, we can just choose normal. Normal is going to scale along both horizontal and vertical, or we can choose to have only one of those scale, or we can choose not to have anything scale. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve. We can also choose to have hinting turned on. And as it says here in this tooltip, it prevents the sort of blurriness from happening on our stroke. We can choose the cap type, which is none, round, or square. We can choose the joint type for miter, round, or bevel. And if we have miter selected, we can adjust that miter. You can see what round and bevel both do as well. So I'm going to keep it at miter. If I draw out a line, we can see that it creates a stroke that's exactly the settings that I chose here. If I wanted to go through and actually do that stippled line, I can do that so we can see the difference. So you can see the stippled is just like a random assortment of dots. So pretty interesting line tool. The shape tools, we have pretty much two different groupings of shape tools. We've got the rectangle and oval tool. And what these will do is create for us a rectangle or oval, and we click and drag to create these. If I click and drag to create a rectangle, we can see that it actually inherits whatever the last stroke settings I had. So if I change this right now, it's not going to change it for this one, but if I create another one, and there are a number of modifier keys to know about here too. For instance, if I hold down shift, we can see that it creates a perfect square for us. Now if I hold down Alt, it'll actually drag out from the center instead of from the upper left. So maybe I'll create a little square here, holding down Shift and Release. So we can see that now that I chose Solid, it's inheriting the stroke that I used previously when I created that other line. Let's go in and change to the Rectangle Primitive tool. So using this tool, I'm able to go in and do the same sorts of thing. So if I drag this, this out, click and drag, it creates this object for us. And the same settings apply as far as keyboard shortcuts. If I hold down Shift, it'll create a perfect one-to-one -one ratio for us. Now, of course, I chose a rectangle primitive, and it's creating what looks like a rounded rectangle and what's almost a circle here. The reason for that is that when you use a rectangle primitive, you have these rectangle options that allow you to adjust the radii of each of these corners. So right now I've got these linked. You can also unlink them. And if I create something with zero radius, it's going to create a square just like we have up top. Moving to the selection tool, if I select this fellow here and take that down to zero, or reset to be quick about it, and then go up and change this stroke to stippled, we can see that we have almost the exact same visual effect in each of these. The only thing is, if I click on this shape right here, and this is just the re regular rectangle, we can see that it's just a basic shape. However, if I click on the primitive, 
and either one will do, we can see that instead of a basic shape, it is actually a rectangle primitive object. And a rectangle primitive, we can still modify the corner radii, whereas if I select the basic rectangle, we have no such settings like that. So the primitive versions of the rectangle and oval tools allow us a greater deal of manipulation after the fact. The last shape tool here is the polystar tool. And using this tool, I can create stars and polygons. So by clicking and dragging, just like with those other shapes, I'm able to create either stars or polygons. And when I have this polystar tool selected, I can go into these tool options and choose whether I want a star or a polygon. I can choose the number of sides, so let's say seven, and the point size. So now if I drag this out, it'll create for us a seven-sided polygon. And notice when it creates these stars and polygons that it's actually creating them as basic shapes. So these aren't primitives whatsoever. So something to be aware of. So this has been a demonstration of how to use the line and shape tools within Flash Professional CS6.